so we have a slightly different uh, schedule of activity for this evening uh, in that we're going to be finding ways to uh, turn this thing into a wonderful piece of artwork. Um, we will also be doing the regular troubleshooting bit at the end for people who have got specific questions that are uh, being troublesome uh, with the coding or the wiring up of your devices. Uh, but this time around, what we want to do is have a focus on producing uh, a lantern that's ready for winter and the Oxford Christmas Light Festival. Wherever you may be, you can still contribute to the Oxford Christmas Light Festival. Uh, so the session today, uh, we'll introduce the whole crew, so we'll get everyone to say hello. We'll go through some, um, some ideas for making a lantern, and then we might have a little bit of time to focus on a bit more coding, because that's what we enjoy doing too. So I'm going to pass on to Sophie. Thank you, Dane. Hello, everybody. It is lovely to see um, all of you here. I just popped our, um, our email address in the chat, so if you are having any problems during the week, do uh, try uh, sending us an email. Um, so today is mostly going to be uh, Tommy, um, where we're going to be making some beautiful lanterns. But if you have been having any problems, feel free to put them in the chat and um, one of us will try and help uh, and we'll stick around at the end. I also have a question for you. Um, so we've got one final session next week. If there is anything in particular you would like to learn to code together, um, then pop that in the chat. Uh, and we will fit. Um, we will try and make sure that everybody, everything that everyone wants to learn how to code, we talk about next week. Okay, so have a think about that. All right, so I have brought two of my friends from RAL along with me today, um, Catherine and Helen. Um, I'll let them both say hello, and Helen is going to talk a little bit more about um, uh, about what she does uh, at the end of the session. Okay, so um, hi, Catherine. Hello, I'm Catherine and I'm a software engineer at RAL and I write code for one of our super microscopes. It's super Helen. cool. <laughs> Helen? Hi, um, I'm Helen and I work for the Central Laser Society um, and I do both science and art. Fab. And uh, we have Sarah as well, who's um, still here. Uh, fixing all of our problems for us in a wonderful fashion. Hi everyone. Uh, and we also have Tommy and Catherine. So Tommy, should we hand over to you? Hi, yeah. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, it's good to see you all again. Uh, very excited to uh, put something together with you. Um, so today uh, we'll look at some different ways and ideas of how you can make your LED lights come to life in an artistic fashion. Um, so with the window of time we have today, I'll show you a few ideas, maybe you get the, the gears turning in your head, and then we'll go through sort of a demonstration um, using some materials. If you have any um, upcycled uh, uh, food containers in your house, um, uh, ideally if you have this, look in the, this window here, um, there I should say Tommy's gadget if you find that window. Um, this is just a, uh, uh, just a no container, um, but you see it's going to be big enough for our little guy to sort of sit in the bottom there. So if you can find something um, big enough for your um, Arduino to sit in. Um, on, this Ar on this Arduino here, um, I've put a portable battery pack on it. So it's, um, uh, as it comes to about this size, roughly the, the size of your small fist, probably. And then I've just used some rubber bands to hold it in place. Now, you know, these, these pins, um, you have to be cut kind of delicate with them. So I think you'll have to get creative as far as how you can sort of put this all together and keep it sort of uh, contained within itself. Um, this uh, here is a packaging that's in two falafel containers. I've just uh, put it together. But it can kind of fit inside and close up. Now I don't think these things get too hot, so a minor le level of ventilation is pr is probably fair enough. But um, as far as following along today, you can kind of take it easy. Um, you don't have to about sort of keeping up um, in pace with the whole project uh, because the project will be recorded. You can go back and revisit it. 
Um, so um, don't uh, rush yourself too much, just sort of enjoy the process and hopefully there'll be a way to get you to think about um, ways that you can um, create your own unique vision and idea of how to make your lantern come together. Um, so if you have a, if you want to try to follow along, that's so that's great. Um, if you have a bit of string, a bit of tape, um, some white tack, um, and uh, you can have some Christmas decorations. Let me sh show you something else here. Um, so got, this is like a Christmas catalog. These are quite good to sort of snip things out. This is out of my recycling bin. So um, I've just sort of everything I have. I've just kind of found and gathered and put together around the house. So it, um, just some things to keep in mind, but again, don't worry about sort of having it all right now. This is just sort of a starting place for you and then you can kind of add to it as time goes on. Um, very few uh, art projects could sort of be completely um, finished and encapsulated within the small window we have. So um, it, it would be quite tricky to, to try to get to a completion by the end of the, the project. So don't, don't rush yourself and don't worry about that. Just start, so maybe start off and then um, on your own time, uh, bring it together. Okay. Uh, here, I'll just show you really quickly. Um, this is a, this is just sort of a, a completed version of the, uh, of a milk carton here. Uh, I sort of plugged the fusion arts there. This one has a disco ball inside. So when things start spinning, um, this will refract the light. This is just a Christmas tree decoration. And, um, it will put on quite a show. Maybe you can cue it to some good music, some Christmas music, and that might look good. Uh, these will, I'm setting these up to have a bit of string at the top so they can hang off that little uh, latch just above your window. And um, I'll set this one off the side. Uh, here is a, just sort of a, sort of a finished demonstration of what it can kind of look like towards the end. This one here. I apologize if my uh, screen is sort of upside down or to the side. I've sort of attached a my phone to a sh to a shelf to try to manage this. So hopefully the orientation won't be too confusing. Um, and let me, if I could, just show you what it might look like when it is inside. I'm just gonna sort of pop this aside. It's probably a bit and then. Sorry, guys, I'll just come away for a second. Pop back this back in. So I maybe have a bit too much light uh, in the room to see this, but it will, everything I've used it has a certain transparency to it. So it can, there it goes, it was a bit delayed there. <laughs> I think maybe one of my, light, my wires are loose because it's, um, yeah, I think that's it. I have a little malfunction. I pulled the wire out. Apologies for that. Let me pop that back into four. There we go. I've been learning so much myself, um, sort of putting these together over the last few days um, with uh, coding and creating these breadboards and Arduinos. Okay, so I'll set that off to the side. Um, let me also show you. Uh, now, if you, for some reason, um, just want to make something without all the cutting and the, the, the taping and putting stuff together, you can also use stuff you maybe have around the house, like building uh, construction sets like Legos or magnet tiles or connects. Um, I will grab my phone here for a second. I apologize. It's going to get a bit wobbly. Um, this is a sort of a, yeah, something I was putting together here. Can you guys see that okay? Everybody can see that, all right? So it's just like a little house. I didn't have the Christmas decorations to put on it, but I made a little space in there and I can light that up. Um, I've also created a, what's that, that one there? I've also created sort of a, a an Oxford spire out of magnet tiles. Uh, these are transparent. So as you can see, if we put our unit here, Inside, apologies, guys. One second. I, I'm surrounded by all, all kinds of gear and stuff. So, um, anyway, so it's quite clear. So you can pop it. Let me see this here. There we go. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm in a very cluttered workshop. So, all right. And 
you can kind of see it's going to come through quite well there. Um, okay, and then I'd like to just quickly show you some. I'm going to put you back up there. I'm going to try to quickly. Uh, I'm going to try to screen share some stuff and just show you some other really great bits that people have put together. Okay, so this is a really good um, demonstration of a Christmas house. All right, and that's without the lights, but that's a really good, I thought that was really nice sort of encapsulating that Christmas uh, sort of feel. And here's one where somebody's really gone really far out and they've attached LEDs in several different parts of the house. And this is an ideal model for having an Arduino because it's just sort of a shell with window spaces in it. And that could be quite uh, easy to do. And then here's another one where you have multiple different LEDs. Sorry, I'll jump back to that. Okay. And I'm just showing you that to uh, give you some ideas about uh, things you can do with everything you might have around the house already. Okay, I think I have my window back up. All good. Um, so I think of these two models, uh, this one here is basically just sort of like a flap. And inside you can see, I've put a piece of um, aluminum foil, which I upcycled from my oven. And um, it's just held in there with a bit of white tack. Um, this bit over the top is just a bit of tissue paper. And these are just, uh, little shapes and things cut out, drawn on, and sort of put together there. So that is sort of uh, what we're going to be sort of moving towards the demonstration today. I'll set that back aside. If you could see all this this stuff around me, it just looks like a, a bomb went off with art supplies everywhere. Um, okay. Uh, oh yeah, before I begin, um, yeah, there's one other one. Um, a, so a, a slightly more su sustainable um, uh, lantern we can have if you want to use elements from outside. Um, Fusion, and I'm going to turn this over to Catherine in a second, have a lantern pack, which they're circulating right now. And the lantern pack comes with all the stuff you need in it. You can see this kit here. This is how to make a lantern. It takes you through a really nicely illustrated step-by-step -step process, um, basically just using you know willow sticks and tissue paper, a bit of PVA glue, and um, a few tools you already have to put together something. This is a nice model of a, sort of a pyramid uh, shape, and this is all the kit that it comes with: tissue paper, tape. There's even a wire to hang it up. So everything you would need. Um, Catherine could tell you how you can sort of get your hands on one of those, but um, I'd like to show you a finished model of that. Um, Catherine has a finished model with a Arduino light in it um, that she can show you. I think she might have it handy there. I actually do. Can you see me? Um, I'll be cool and switch the light off because it would look so much better. So I used the rainbow Arduino that we made. Very impressive light show. Earlier. So, um, but it basically, it looks like this. You can really make them in all, all shapes that you want um, once you, once you understand how to tape the, um, the willow pieces together and how to tissue over them, you can, um, you can get very creative with it and just pop your LED unit into it. Yeah, do, does anybody want to pop anything in the comments? Any um, ideas or things that are popping in their head, like stuff you even see around you, things in the house, if it's in your recycling bin or some building materials you have, um, you know, something like this, uh, upcycled, 
uh, box you might have laying around. Um, but I bet you, you probably have a lot of really good resources around you that you can fashion something into. Um, and I guess the really fun part is creating the coding that brings it to life. Your rainbow flashing uh, coding, Catherine, is very impressive. I really tried hard to um, work that out, but I, I was struggling with the, with the pins and stuff. But I think I nearly got it now, though. So after today's session, I'm going to go back and master my coding. Okay, so I will just look there. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just go through this now and it'll be recorded so that you guys can go back and follow in your real, real time if you wanna do something with a milk container. But um, I do encourage you, you know, don't limit yourself just to this. Um, think really far outside the box and think of a lot of different ways you can go. But this might be a really good starting point for you if you just wanna do something um, straight away uh, without uh, too much a gathering of resources and materials. So I'm just going to mark it out real quick and just show you real quick how to make the flap. Okay, I got my Spider-Man ruler here. I'm a fan of the Spider-Man. So let's see here. I'm going to just make a line up the side. I'm going to move it back just a, maybe a bit more. Sort of like a halfway point. You just make a line there. Uh, I got to keep looking up my screen to make sure I'm, I'm not going off the screen there. Make a line there. And then I'm going to just uh, come along the bottom. And if you want to have a, a bit more space at the bottom to hide your Arduino, and if you have quite a large pack like I do, you, you probably need a bit more space. So you can even maybe come up a bit higher than that initial line. And you can come across like this. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line because you're just going to kind of cut through it. Yeah. And then up here at the top, I'm going to just bring it to the edge, but I'm not going to bring it all the way around because I'm going to leave some aspects of it to be still connected. So just even a little bit of space at the top there, if uh, an inch or so is fine. OK. Now for um, health and safety reasons, please do be careful uh, about um, using scissors and sliding off the, the plastic and hurting yourself. I always find it's good to just take a pen uh, to make an initial incision and just always make sure you're kind of point, you're pointing away from you and not towards you. And then if I just pop a little hole with a pen, I could do it even in the corners there if I need to. And then take my scissors, safety, first, pull them away from me, and then I can push in, and then I'm going to, I'm going to mute this for a second, because it's going to get really, really loud. Actually, no, it's, it's not, it's not that loud, so it's not so bad. I'm being a little bit dramatic. And uh, these smell cartons are fairly thin, so they, they should cut quite easily without uh, too much effort. Uh, and if you're not comfortable with this, um, please do have, your, have a parent help you out if you're not used to cutting through material like this. We just have a parent help you out all together. So you should have a sort of a, a flat section here that will come out. And I do apologize for the, the crunchy noise in the background. If you guys want to just turn your volume down if it gets, gets a bit too loud. And I just have this flap. So I have a nice little container here that I can pop my, my unit inside. Um, so these edges here um, sometimes can be a little bit sharp depending on how thick the plastic is. Mine's quite thin, so I don't think I'll have a problem. But I'll just quickly show you. If you have a bit of this sort of masking tape, it is quite good to go over the edges and just sort of make sure the edges are clipped. It also will be a good way to create a flap for yourself when need to. I'll just do this really fast. 
and you might want to do this on all sides of the plastic on this way both the, the door and the body of the milk carton and if i wasn't trying to go so fast i'd probably take my time a little bit more make it a little bit more neater but just to move through it really quickly i'll just kind of do it a bit a bit slap and dash okay Okay, so just make sure we get all the edges like that. Okay, I'll just skip ahead to the next few steps, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure you just get all your edges outlined like that. You can even do something like this. I can create a flap for you. If you just put an extra piece of tape on like this and then fold it back around on itself when it comes to holding itself inside, that little extra piece of tape will tuck nicely in there like that. I'll do it a bit slow motion so you can kind of see. That little catch flap will catch it really nicely. I've done that on the others as well. Okay, so this um, this here, we'll, we're, we're gonna put the tissue paper on, uh, but before we do that, we'll go through the inside. So with this backing inside here, you can use, you know, white paper, um, whatever you want to do to kind of like make the insides have a bit more light bounce off it. Um, you can paint the inside um, something where, you know, something bright yellow or a bright orange, whatever you think would help sort of increase the back, but you want to sort of keep the, the front of it translucent as, as well. So I'll just place this over here with my reused bit of foil. I'll just trim this down some. Start there. Okay. And when you guys do this, I know you're going to do much better than what I'm doing now. You're going to take your time and you're going to cut it really nice and clean down the edges and make it look really smart. Then I have a bit of white tack here. So you just need very minimal amount of white tack. You won't need very much of it all. So I'll take a bit off here and I'll just break it down into little sections. Maybe I might roll up, you know, um, four or six little pieces. Okay. Like that. Everybody can see that. Okay. Now I'll just pop this along the back side there. Back side there, just stick those inside. They're just going to kind of help hold it in place. Okay, and then I'll just kind of curl this up into a, there we go, like that. Just ever so that you like a, like you're getting ready to make a burrito. Okay, and then I'll just slide this in. It's gonna get a bit loud, I apologize. Okay. Then I'll find my blue tack and I will, my white tack, I'm sorry. I use both blue tack and white tack, so I jump between saying the different colors every time I'm referencing it. Okay, and then I'll push it down onto the tack, kind of hold it in place. Okay. A little bit of extra tape, and I'm just gonna take here some up at the top there. Inside, you can see there, I just kind of fashion to the back. Put a little bit of tape up there and I'll put a little bit of tape down at the bottom. Okay, the next step is we're just going to use something that light can pass through fairly easily. If you had really thin tracing paper, that would be really ideal. Um, I have 
some old tissue paper from a gift bag that I was able to reuse. So I will roughly make this the size of the front and this here, and I'll just kind of cut that to shape. So it's a little bit, as you can see, it's a little bit tall there. So maybe I'll just trim that down some. Okay guys, so that's just roughly that side. I'm looking at a lot of different screens so my orientation is getting all turned around. All right, so that's roughly about that size there. And then I want to, um, I'm gonna switch from this kind of tape, which actually this, this tape is actually quite fine. Light can pass through it fairly well, but I will switch from, from this tape to some solo tape as it's a bit more transparent. I'm sure you guys have some tape somewhere around. Okay, and I'm just gonna attach it to the flap. So on this back side here, I'll get a little bit on the flap and a little bit on the white paper, white tissue paper there, a little hold there. And I'll put a little bit up here, okay. And again, I think you guys are gonna do much better than I will because you'll be able to take your time and kind of go through it you won't be biting tape with your teeth. You'll be doing it civilized, not like me, like an artist caveman. Just want to quickly move through it all so we can get on to some other bits. Okay. Um, now that you have your, your front bit uh, on here, you'll have it maybe secured a little bit more firmly. You might want to take some more time and go around, get all your tape in there, right? Just snug it up really nice on there. And like I was showing you on this one here where it's a bit more connected, um, it's a bit more flush. And when it comes back, it'll be open quite easily. And these little uh, tabs will, will tuck it into the side. The tape tabs can tuck it into the sides really easily there. Okay. Um, now on this front here, this is where you can use uh, bits from a catalog. If you want to just make it really quick and easy for yourself, you can cut out um, little decoration bits. Um, I have, um, <clears throat> from this very catalog, you know, I've, I've cut out these uh, here for this other one. Uh, so you might find already nicely illustrated bits in different Christmas catalogs um, or upcycled Christmas decorations. Um, but in this instance, I'm going to drop this down here. I'm going to show you what we can do with just customizing our own bits. So I might, let's see here, uh, I might sort of create a Christmas tree roughly on the size here. I'm just going to uh, sketch it down like this. Now, Again, I think you guys lanterns are going to look far better than mine because you're going to be able to take your time with it. It won't be a crudely drawn tree like this. Um, and I do have paint here, but I think I'm going to skip painting it today because the paint will take some time to dry and it'll look pretty messy, but I think you kind of get the idea. Uh, so I'll just Shaded in some. If, if Bob Ross was watching this right now, he would be, he'd have a lot of questions for me. A little bit there. Trying to show dark, darker side, lighter side. Trying to sh show an element of light in it. Why not s switch it up for one more? Okay, you're thinking that's the best tree I've ever seen. I know, I know you're thinking that and appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Why not? We got a brown. I'll just I'll chuck it on there real quick. So again, guys, um, I'm just trying to show you guys uh, some ideas, things that you might help you start thinking in, in other directions. Um, I don't necessarily uh, mean I would want you to create a tree, um, but this is just what's popping into my head at the moment. And if you want to create a tree, that's great, but um, you might want to create something that's totally not Christmassy at all. You might want to make like a robot or a Pokemon or whatever your favorite characters are. I know you're thinking you're like Pokemon. That's so. That's so. Two years ago, what's he talking about Pokemon? I'm a, I'm totally Minecraft now. Get with it, guy. Um, to save some time, I've grabbed some uh, stickers. I hope I'm keeping everything on the screen for you. I grabbed some stickers instead of sitting here drawing out every little owl. I would probably stick on this this tree here. Now that'd be quite exciting. But so I'm going to sort of bring this around here. I'm going to quickly grab a bit of tape to help hold it in place, but I also use blue tack, sorry, white tack. I can place it there. Um, and I'm going to pop my little Santa down there. Just trying to be mindful of the time. Okay. So um, I fashioned this on here and let's see here. I'm going to run just quickly a bit of string through the top. Let me see. Again, when you're punching the plastic, um, it's good to use a pen rather than coming with scissors or a knife. Um, yeah, definitely don't, don't use a knife um, or a, you know, a Stanley knife or anything like that. Although I know we'd go through it much easier. Just, just start off with a pen really. Nice and easy. Um, just bra I'm bracing the bottle against here and I'm just poking away from myself. I'm just going to poke a hole there, I'll poke a hole here. It's really gently without much force. It, it will pass through the plastic pretty easily. And uh, moving everything around my cluttered workshop here. Uh, this is a bit of uh, garden wire. You could pick this up at Poundland, or you might have some already, ideally. Uh, if you don't want to use this, um, you can use some string. Uh, this one is cool because it has a already cutting, cutting uh, snipper there for you, so it does all the work. And I can pass this through here. I'm trying to watch both screens to see that I'm actually doing this <laughs> in front of the screen for you. Okay. And then I can put my hand inside here and grab this. And take my time. Focus my Maybe I can hold this a little bit bigger. And when you bring it around, make it, I would say, start off with a, a quite a long piece of string or a wire, whatever you're using, and then shorten it as you need it. Um, this one's going to be quite short, but then you can twist it around or tie it around, whatever you're using, get it in a really good lock, twist it shut, and then if you want to make it look even a bit cleaner, you can swing this around so that the knot goes on the inside and completely stays hidden. So there you guys have it. That's a, it's a bit of a crude 
crudely fashioned quick example, but I think it gives you a good, a good idea of possibilities and where you can start. The whole idea is that you're trying to use materials that light can pass through fairly easily and fill the body of it with things that can help reflect a bit of light. So some stark white paper in the back or some um, aluminum foil if you have some. And, and uh, it's, it's quite an easy, quick to do model. And let's switch back to this one. Like <laughs> that was able to take a bit more time on and you can see it's, uh, it, it will come out looking much, much nice when you're able to start take your time with it. And it has a nice wide body there that can house your unit. And if you don't have a portable pack like this, you can, you can run a wire from your um, sort of other devices if, if it's near the window, not too far away, you can fit inside there nicely, close up the net, will definitely hang and it will stay really nicely. Once it's there, you can fashion it shut. And there is a, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get it rumbly here for a minute. This will latch easily onto this window here and that's gonna face outside for my neighbors to see. And then they're gonna ask me, where did you get that from? And I'm gonna tell them all about this LED workshop. Okay. Um, well, that is a good starting point, I thought. Um, I'd love to see your guys' ideas of uh, different things you can think you can use around the house, different ways you can sort of set that up. Um, if anybody has any thoughts they want to share on uh, ways they can use sort of transparent materials to have the light shine through and keep your little Arduino um, boxed up nicely inside a little container, uh, drop it in the comments if you like. Um, with the time we have left, I'd like to turn it back over to the rest of my team. Thanks so much, Tommy. That was really good fun thinking about how we can kind of produce something that's out of um, things that we'd normally throw away, actually. Uh, so milk bottles and bits of foil. Uh, while you were just making that demonstration, I tried to find a bit of foil in my recycling. I don't know if I can show this right. I've made a little, ooh, and I found some little bits from outside, and I sort of made it out of a single piece of toilet paper and have taken it. So sometimes toilet paper comes in three pieces, so three ply, and I've managed to just get one piece out. Oh, just nice. A, a diffusing kind of thing. So I've got my multicolored LED. I found some pine cones from outside. And look here, there's, I'll show you from behind. It's a little pie tin <laughs> that I had for dinner wow. a few days ago. So I just cut that in half and used that as a reflective surface. So I mean, I'm very, I'm very impressed. You threw that together very, very well with used materials. And I have to say that's probably the best use of toilet paper I've seen in my lifetime. <laughs> so, but again, it's sort of, this is not the most beautiful item in the world. And I think with people uh, taking a bit of care and time and, some of these creative ideas to get bits of you know stuff that's just in the house that you would ordinarily throw away bits of you know if you have a pie or something like that or a, a roast chicken or something i don't know like wash out the foil you have probably have loads of these bits of foil just kicking around that might be thrown away or put in the recycling hopefully but this time around you can reuse them and upcycle them into a really beautiful piece of uh table or window art uh, and I think next week we'll try and maybe we'll celebrate and showcase uh, everyone's piece of um, or you know, lanterns that are in progress. Because I think the real key is that we want to get the Oxford Christmas Light Festival um, get and all these kind of creative ideas on the festival's Instagram and Facebook and Twitter channels uh, so we can really celebrate um, creativity and sustainability and coding across Oxford and further afield. Um, so Catherine, maybe do you want to talk a little bit about the the kit again, how, how people can get hold of a fusion arts kit? 
Um, we actually have them available via the Ox Christmas Light Fester website, uh, which is oxlightfest.com. Um, just click on the button, get involved um, and follow the link. And then you can order one to your doorstep. Um, it comes with pretty much everything you need. We um, opted to not include any PVA because most people tend to have it at home. Um, if they don't, I can recommend looking it up on YouTube. You can actually make PVA yourself using flour, vinegar and water, um, which is really amazing. And then um, you can build a lantern in the shape um, that the, um, the leaflet advises on the pyramid lantern. You can um, stick all kinds of uh, colored, um, colored chocolate wrappers or um, other things uh, on it to create shapes. Or you can just go absolutely um, and follow your, your own creative ideas and make, make something that I showed you earlier, um, just a different shape. So yeah, look at the website. There is, there is so many things there. You can make lanterns out of jam jars. You can pretty much since the Adreno is such a rainbow of color and you can program it in such amazing ways uh, you can i am sure you can pop it in a shoe box and it will look fantastic just have a look i think that this is the the challenge to make something really creative uh, and you completely can customize it as well so you can control the colors you can control the shape you can control the flashing light uh, sequence, all the rest, all the things that you can, you know, I, these are works of art uh, that you're making. So thanks so much, Catherine uh, and Tommy for that inspiration. So maybe if we have a little bit of time, uh, and I think we might have a couple of minutes, um, we might not have enough time to do any new coding. Uh, We're gonna hear from Helen though. Oh yes, yes, yes about how she combines art and science um, and lights that are a little bit bigger than the lights that we have been playing with. Helen? Okay, let's share my screen. So I'm just going to talk really quickly about the amazing facility that I come from. Um, so I work here as a communications officer. I'm going to talk about some of the art and science that some of our scientists have done, as well as a couple of the lasers that we have here. So first of all, we have Octopus Laser Facility. Um, this laser is, or this set of lasers, is um, really good at doing biology. So that ranges from things like uh, looking at plants, looking at how they work, and potentially looking at things like, for example, um, how they react to really cold snaps um, of weather and whether we can kind of help them to, um, uh, whether there's something that um, we can do to help them you know, um, be more, uh, resistant to that um, for our crops for our food um, and then there's things like um, we look at diseases and we look at the drugs that um, help prevent or rather treat diseases and we kind of basically with octopus we're able to look at things really really closely and observe them and learn more about them and potentially from that we can come to some solutions um, so we have some tricks up our sleeve about how to um, how to do that uh, one of them is a really amazing technique called um, fluorescence um, uh, fluorescence imaging and this is where we basically take um, fluorescent dye and we tag tiny little individual um, little cells and proteins so that we can observe them a lot easier under the microscope. So you can see this image here is a, um, is a little spheroid of cells and but thanks to the fluorescence we're able to see it really easily. Um, another really amazing trick that we have up our sleeve um, is we're able to trap little particles like this little fluorescent um, um, uh, aerosol droplet here, um, we're able to trap them mid-air using a laser. So this is a really highly focused laser beam um, and it's floating mid-air thanks to that laser. And this is really great for if we're trying to observe something, um, we're trying to look at um, little tiny particles and aerosols and things like that, um, but we don't want them to kind of interact with anything else. You know, we don't want them to sit in a solution or sit on the, on the surface, so we have them floating mid-air. Um, and this kind of science, you're learning more about things, so you can you can end up creating some, um, uh, inventing some great solutions. Um, so this is um, this is actually some art that was made with using one of our octopus machines. 
Um, so last year, um, around Christmas time, as you might expect, um, the um, the Octopus team got a new um, uh, a new machine um, called a Fibsen machine, and they had a play around with it about how kind of small could they draw things using an, um, a little ion beam. And so this is actually 20 microns tall, this, um, uh, this snowman here. And the snowflakes are only 2.5 microns in diameter. And to put that in perspective, a red blood cell uh, that you find in your blood is seven to eight microns across. So this is, they are smaller than our red blood cells. Um, uh, just another example here is also this, um, uh, this you can see on, if you look at your own ruler, um, a thousand microns fit inside um, one millimeter. And then we have the um, Vulcan, Vulcan laser facility. Um, so just to add these little drawings here that I have, these are ones that I've done, because as I've mentioned before, I'm an artist, so I like to uh, draw about science. Um, and Vulcan laser facility is, um, is really, really powerful. That's kind of what, that's its speciality. Um, and so a focus down laser beam um, at, the, at um, the Vulcan laser facility is a thousand million million watts, which is um, to compare a normal light bulb is around 60 watts and often actually less than that. Um, and with that kind of power, that kind of energy when you're hitting it, it's very, very hot. Um, and so when you, um, when you hit a little laser target, then you can create miniature stars or the cores of planets. You can basically create little tiny um, astronomical, um, astronomical phenomena, <laughs> that's a bit of a mouthful there, um, you know, right in front of you, right, uh, right in the lab, rather than trying to see them really, really far away. So we can learn more about space right in the lab, which is really cool. Um, and as I mentioned, so we have these targets that the Vulcan, um, Vulcan likes to hit. And um, our targets are all um, mostly handmade by a really, um, a really, um, talented team of people and actually um, recently um, one of our um, target fabricators which is what we call them they made this tiny little snow globe using that kind of scientific skills and the, and the materials that they have um, and you can see here these, these these are tiny little trees and then a little dome and inside was full of liquid and then there's little bits of um, snow as well and this is actually sitting on top of a pine needle that you'd find on a Christmas tree. That's how tiny it is. And so this was a tiny piece of art made with um, made with kind of made by a scientist using scientific expertise. Um, so just um, like um, our, uh, just like our scientists and engineers at the Central Laser Facility like to combine art and science, um, so can you. And I hope you really enjoyed making the lights today. Thanks. Some more inspiration. Maybe there's a, a way of making some sort of Arduino snow globe that's a bit bigger than that tiny one that you've just shown, uh, Helen. <laughs> thanks, thanks for sharing those examples. I think inspiration can come from anywhere, can't it? Um, so I think that's, unless we have anything that we need to cover, I think that's most of the stuff that we kind of wanted to kind of cover today. Uh, finding a way to kind of bring the kind of coding technology and creative uh, practices together from a whole different range um, of directions. Thanks very much for coming. We'd love to see your creative interpretations of uh, a Christmas lantern for next week. Uh, so please start harvesting milk bottles and foil and all the rest of it um, before you even think about throwing them in the trash. Uh, please wash them out and cut them and shape them into a, a case for your Arduino light show. Uh, 